Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, by becoming a patron or simply by not ad-blocking the ads on our videos. Due to the current global situation, we are back to self-quarantining and recording our matches digitally. This week, I'm trying Cobblepot's Hate Thieves with Timna and Sakashima. Luis is on Red underscore Jester's Togo and Thrasios. David is playing CADH cast Brayden's Paco's Modern Life feat Paco and Haldan. And Bal is on the 99's Patrick's Turbo Hellbent Rograk and Timna. It's a partner fest. Bal won the role yet again and he is the one starting. He mulliganed down the 6 and has a single land polluted delta. However, he has a bunch of ramp in Lotus Petal, Sol Ring and Seeding Song. So much so that he can reach Luca Coppercoat Outcast to rush towards the Polymorph game plan as early as turn 1. He also has Ad Nauseam, which he can't cast right now. He sent the only creature in his library, Sire of Insanity, to the bottom. My hand has no hate bears, but it does have two lands, Urbark Tomb of Yawgmoth and Scalding Tarn, and a dual lotus that could lead to a turn 1 Timna if I don't find other fast mana. Hope of Girapur uses the card draw from Timna pretty well and doubles down as protection. Silence can be used aggressively or defensively, and Springleaf Drum turns some of my squishiest hate bears into ramp. Finally, the money consultation is half of everyone's love to hate combo. Brandao Mulligan once and decided to risk a slower hand. He has Exotic Orchard and Verdant Catacombs for lands, with tons of two mana cards in Arcane Signet for ramp. Muddle Mixture for Interaction or Tutoring, Mana Drain to counter whatever he finds most urgent, Vexing Shusher as a way to protect spells he wants to see resolve, and finally Goblin Engineer which is the perfect blend of Tutor and a way to turn Toga's rocks into more than something to throw at creatures. Finally, David Mulligan down to 6 as well. His hand is not able to throw an early Paco, but it's still pretty okay. He has an island, which enables him to dig around with Ponder and further lead that into ramp with 3 visits or disruption with Gilded Drake. He has 2 counter spells, Mental Misstep and Miscast. Finally, the incredible Jessica's Will was sent to the bottom as it's too slow for his hand. The partner showdown is now. Ba starts up by playing and cracking Polluted Delta for a Badlands. He did draw a Pyretic Ritual, which he considered playing with the pedal to bypass mental missteps, but he would rather have Sol Ring on the table so that he's not also on top deck mode after his game plan. He casts Sol Ring, to which David loses 2 life to counter it with mental misstep. The tables turn from last week. Baal resigns himself to playing Lotus Petal and passing, no longer able to turn 1 Luka. We have no idea the tragedy that was just averted. I draw a chrome box and decide to sequence slowly, not to scare the table. I play and crack a Scalian Tarn for a Tundra. Then I just cast Hope of Girapur and pass, leaving my fast mana for turn 2 totally unaware of what Baal's deck does. Luis plays an Exotic Orchard and passes, having no fast mana. Devi plays Island and then ponders to look for that green mana or that rock that can push his speed up a notch. Baal plays City of Brass and moves to the ideal turn 2 for his deck. He casts Pyretic Ritual into Seeding Song. This allows him to cast Luca Coppercoat Outcast. The rest of us are left to wonder what exactly his polymorphing will do as Bal casts the Cobalt Who Could Rograk. Bal down takes Luca, exiling Rograk to get his only creature in the deck, a Sire of Insanity. The rest of the table gasps in horror and I feel like a fool. He goes to end step and everybody discards their hands. Hello Darkness, our old friend. On my turn, I just draw and discard, passing. Luis, however, draws pretty much the perfect card. He goes ahead and moves to end step, letting the Sire's trigger go into the stack. He then casts Chain of Vapor on Sire of Insanity, which is discarded to its own trigger. Just like that, it is gone. Like our hands, really. David draws and passes, parting that Monolander with pride. How exactly will we recover from this early blow to our resources? Bal has a plan, of course. He uses his turn to sack Lotus Petal and play Timna the Weaver. Recovery mode on. 
I am fortunate enough to top deck an island which I play before passing. Luis and David though do not find any lands, instead they do the draw go, unfortunate. We go to Bal's turn and he moves to combat. He decides to attack me with Timna, reasoning I might not want to block since I only need a land for my own Timna. However, I need a black producing land and that could be as much on top as on the last 30 cards of my library. And so, I block to take a draw from Bal and hopefully give more time to the table to recover. On his second main, Bal casts Thrill of Possibility. He finds in place Shadow Skull the Hammer Pass. It's a land. My turn does not include me finding a swamp. Instead, it's a draw go. Luis, however, does manage to find and play a Scalding Tarn, which gets cracked for a tropical island. Then, he plays Thrasios. He might be getting close-ish to recovery mode. As for David, he finds a Spire Garden and passes. We're slowly getting back on track. We're back to Bal's turn as he attacks me with Timna once again since I could be on Adnos. I have no responses, so Bal gets to do the Timna thing at last and lose one life to draw a card. Without much else to do, he casts the little kobold once more and passes to me. On my turn, I find and play a Marsh Flats. I crack it looking to cast Timna. However, since he has a plan, Bal responds to this, scaring me to hell and back to cast a Silence. This way, I am prevented from casting Timna this turn and lose the ability to maybe drawing cards from her on the next. I fetch for a scrubland. Luis also finds a fetch, Bloodstained Mire. Lamenting happy to crack it for a volcanic island before playing Togo who, right now, seems pretty focused on aiming some rocks at Timna. Luis passes almost recovered. The V plays a forest and passes. Two more lands for him to start drawing four with the bestest of Gruul boys. On his turn, Bal keeps pressuring me with the lifelink commander, drawing one after combat. On his second main, he plays a trusty mana grip and horrifies the table as he follows that up with a pretty unexpected blood moon. At this point, Luis tosses his virtual lands up in the air, although Thrasios does not care for land color. On my hand, I am in a tainted pack plan, so yikes. I do draw a Mana Vault, which I use to cast Sakashima. I have no creatures to copy, but hey, he's still a legit 3-1 to boot. Luis does nothing and passes instead, not finding that land to toss to our faces. On his end step, David flashes in the huge Commander Legend staple, Hull Breacher. We fear for a hands, again. On his turn, David plays Wheel of Misfortune. Game Theory goes onto the stack as we think for a bit. Then, each of his opponents chooses 0 to avoid, well, misfortune, and David chooses 1. He discards his hand, draws 7, and loses 1 life. Everyone else just watches, really. David then plays an exotic orchard. He attacks Luca with a hull breacher in case Bal has a way to shuffle Sire of Insanity back to his deck. Luca goes away, duty fulfilled. Bal loses the crypt roll which, granted, isn't very scary at the moment. He swaps targets to David, attacking him with Timna because of Hull Breacher. He decides not to draw a card from her trigger because, you know, why give David some treasures? Bal plays a Plains and passes. My turn consists of me eating a Mana Vault ping and passing. Likewise, Luis's turn is a good old draw go, with no rocks to toss at Hull Breacher or Timna. David, however, gets to play a mountainous waterlogged grove, which makes the mana needed to cast Paco, Arcane Retriever. The good boy attacks Ball and each player exiles the top card of their libraries, most notably a Wheel of Fortune from his own deck. So yeah, basically Paco drew 4 cards once Halden hits the board and it got 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Ball isn't about eating any of that damage, so he puts the Brave Kobold in front of the hulking Paco, defending his life total. On his second crypt roll, Ball manages to win. He plays an Arcane Signet and once again attacks David with Timna, hoping this is a race he can win. He passes. On my turn, I take the second ping from the Vault. I play a Mountainous Verdant Catacombs before passing. Luis quite fortunately finds in place a Mountainous Academy Ruins, which triggers Togo, I wanna rock! creating his very first rock. He equips Togo with it and throws it at Hull Breacher just to reduce the odds of David finding something like a deflecting swat for protection. Boom, headshot. Hull Breacher's own hull is breached and it sinks to the graveyard. Luis passes. 
David starts his turn up by attacking Brandon with Paco. Everybody exiles the top and David gets two ways to protect himself in Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast along with a Tainted Pact. Oh boy. Paco gets 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters and Brandon takes 10 commander damage. With a really neat amount of cards with fetch counters on them, David goes ahead and casts Halden. The card advantage is starting to feel pretty intense. He plays a Morphic Pool with Halden and passes. Balscript is up to no good again on his upkeep. Since everyone has blockers, Bal sends Team Nam my way since it's the only place where, if there's a block, both parties lose. I see a giant dog, so little Timna does not intimidate me at all. I take the damage and Bal gets an extra draw before he passes. Completely void of options, I pay to untap the Mana Vault before passing. Luis finds and plays a mountainous windswept heat. Togo triggers only once, I wanna rock! as Luis complains he could have gotten two trusty rocks out of him if the moon wasn't in play. Brandon equips Togo with the rock for good measure, since there's a good chance David will try to use the Noxious Revival Exile by Paco to recover the Hull Reacher and attempt to take out our hands. However, on Luis's end step, David first and foremost casts Tainted Pact, especially since the list's mana base is already considering this scenario. He exiles a bunch of cards and stops at Deflecting Swat, which is perfect to protect him from Togo. He then loses 2 life to cast Noxious Revival, putting Hullbreacher on top of his library. The table gets pretty tense. David starts his turn by looking for more cards as he attacks Bal with the good boy Paco. It triggers and gets him additional protection in a swan song from me. This gives Paco 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters and makes it so that Bal takes a modest 14 commander damage. He then plays a Snow Forest and casts Sol Ring Paco Fetch from Luis. He then casts Wheel of Fortune. Holding priority, he flashes in Hull Reacher. Now at this time, Luis uses Togo to throw a rock at Hull Reacher again. Hull Reacher is prepared this time and with a deflecting swat, he attempts to make Togo slap himself with the rock. At this point, Bal casts Reverberate, copying the Deflecting Swat, changing the target of the original Deflecting Swat onto the copy. However, David casts the Swan Song Paco Fetched to counter Bal's Deflecting Swat and give him a blocker in the process. Togo hits itself in the head with his own rock, accomplishing a 360 no scope. Clean. With the wheel still on the stack, Bal bolts Hull Breacher. Lightning is harder to redirect than rocks, and so Hull Breacher gets fried while everybody gets to discard their hand and draw 7. Yeah, you should not have all. Fresh hands for everyone. But there's still a Blood Moon stopping me and Luis from participating. Bal starts his turn by winning the roll and playing a mountainous prismatic vista. He plays a talisman of indulgence, Sweet Ramp. Bal then casts a Luminarch Ascension. Seeing another problematic permanent, I show my objection by casting Fierce Guardianship. Bal resumes dropping mana rocks with Talisman of Conviction, which he kept hidden just to limit our perception of how many angels the Ascension might be able to create. Finally, he casts Shenanigans on David's Soul Ring, attempting to cool him down. My turn consists of me playing a mountainous watery grave. Don't want to get too excited here. Luis starts his turn by activating Thrasios. He reveals Grim Monolith. He plays a Command Tower followed by a Tarmort Script. He casts Grim Monolith before passing. On his end step, David plays Red Elemental Blast to destroy Thrasios since he is looking to one-shot players now. Luigi is forced to counter that plan with his own Fierce Guardianship, keeping himself around some more. On his turn, David casts Snap on Sakashima, who waves goodbye. He attacks me with Paco since it does not one-shot me and gives him another round of drawing 4 cards with his commander. The best boy triggers and David exiles, among other cards, his own Noxious Revival. Paco adds 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters to its gigantic size and deals 18 commander damage straight at my face. Moving to his second main, David casts Bloom Tender for much needed additional blue mana. He then plays a mountainous Graven Carnes and casts Birds of Paradise. David goes ahead and uses the Diabolic Intent fetched by Paco, sacrificing the birds and secretly getting himself a Cyclonic Rift. Bal Script is at it again, slapping him for 3 life. He attacks me with Timna, going for that sweet additional draw. 
He plays Arid Mesa, followed by Serum Powder and then casts Rograk. To reinforce his defenses, since David's next attack can be lethal. He passes. On my turn, I play Vault of Champions and recast Sakashima, still lacking colored mana for anything else. Luis starts his turn once again by activating Thrasios. He reveals a mountainous botanical sanctum, which enters the battlefield tapped. He is somewhat resigned to his fate as he passes to David. The second teamer player, David, starts his turn by attacking Luis with Paco. It triggers and he checks what comes off of that. Since there is nothing interesting from Luis, David lets Paco get 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters and, before the Deflame player gets to blockers, Thrasios gets mercilessly pyroblasted. Paco hits Luis square in the face for a lethal commander damage. Once again, Luis, the lethal damage magnet, gets taken out of the game. With him go the exiled cards Paco had merrily fetched for. On his second main, David plays a mountainous ancient tomb into a sylvan library. He passes. Baal wins the crypt roll, sparing his life from unnecessary pain. He casts Tormenting Voice and then casts Steel Shaper's Gift. He gets a Captain's Claw, which gets equipped onto Rograk. Baal moves to combat and attacks me with Rograk, creating a core token. Since I am unable to cast anything, I block the token with Sakashima and take the other damage. Baal draws from Timna before he plays a mountainous wooded foothills. Baal then casts Talisman of Hierarchy and goes ahead and tries to go back into his disruption plan as he reanimates the Sire of Insanity, losing 6. Baal moves to end step and I'm all but ready to discard. David, however, has a larger plan in mind. As the trigger is on the stack, he casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. It resolves and so our fate is pretty much sealed as we return our non-land permanents to our hands and discard them. On my turn, I finally get to play Timna. I have mana now. Moving to my end step, David casts Noxious Revival, putting Seasons Past on the top of his library. He then draws two from the library, losing four life and casts Seasons Past. This gets him back a plethora of cards. Taiga, Noxious Revival, Snap, Deflecting Swat, Submerge. Seasons Past goes to the bottom of his library and David casts Gamble, searching for a Time Warp, and randomly discards some merch. He casts Time Warp. He attacks Baal with Paco for lethal. Since he has at least two extra turns, I decide it's time to throw in the towel. Well played. Thank you for joining us for today's matches, everyone. The partnership that came out on top was none other than the best boy Paco and his human Halden. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Perp, Ajimo, Pig Legal, Heated Chill, Drunken Housecat, Uncrustable, and Cosmic Astro, our stack breakers. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.